Senator Dalfon. Merci, M. le Président. Honorable Sénateur, we have all heard about the recent violent acts towards Indigenous people, including the assault of Chief Alan Adams in Fort McMurray, the 22-year-old Indigenous man who was struck by a police vehicle door in Nunavut, and the two horrific deaths in New Brunswick, Chantal Moore and Rodney Levy, of which I spoke about earlier this week twice. These are just a few recent examples that drives home the need to address systemic racism in our policy, policing in Canada. However, racism, be it towards Indigenous peoples, Black Canadians, or other people of colour within our justice system is nothing new. For decades, racial tensions have been bubbling under the surface without insufficient significant action to address them. Unfortunately, it took deaths, deaths here and in the USA to initiate a focus on policing in Canada and to lead to a deeper conversation on systemic racism across our country. Senators, I may not have lived experience of racism and discrimination, but I do understand facts and data when available, of course. There are no two ways about it. Systemic racism exists, and it is very much a reality for a significant portion of our population. In Quebec City and in Ottawa, some elected representatives still don't understand or claim not to understand what systemic racism is. That is surprising, to say the least, considering the many studies, reports of commissions, Supreme Court rulings, and recent events that have been reported in the media. On the 15th of June, in response to a report on racism and systemic discrimination published by the Public Consultation Office of Montreal, which my colleague Senator Seidman referred to earlier, the mayor of Montreal stated, we are firmly committed to implementing systemic solutions to systemic problems. We must act now, and Montreal should act as a model. End of quote. According to the mayor, recognizing the existence of systemic racism in the municipal administration means that, by extension, the problem is also present within Montreal's police service. The mayor's statement is notable, but once again, it is not surprising. Montreal, like other Canadian cities, has witnessed no numerous acts of police brutality towards visible minorities and, doubt, uh, and dubious practices such as profiling that targets people of color. But racism and systemic discrimination extend beyond the police universe. ...still exists in all spheres of our justice system despite the fact that it has been made public many years ago. I will refer to an example, an important example. In 1971, Donald Marshall Jr., a man well known in the Atlantic provinces, was wrongly convicted of murder and spent 11 years in a prison for a crime he did not commit. In 1990, seven years after his release, a Royal Commission that was chaired by a judge and assisted by my former Chief Justice of the Superior Court exonerated him of all blame. The Commission stated the criminal justice system failed him at every step of the way and systemic racism contributed to his wrongful conviction. It has been 30 years since the Royal Commission determined Donald Marshall faced systemic racism within the justice system. Unfortunately, little has changed. A 2014 report from the Office of the Correctional Investigator found evidence of systemic racism within each of the components of the criminal justice system." Quote. Earlier this week, 
The Parliamentary Black Caucus also singled out this still prevailing problem. Speaking of Mr. Marshall, back in his community, once he has been released, he took over a case with the Supreme Court called Marshall versus Canada on behalf of the Mi'kmaq claiming their fishing rights he won in the Supreme Court in 1999 in a much celebrated case, a landmark case about fishing rights and indigenous, indigenous treaty rights. However, as we heard from Senator Christmas last year, when we were looking at Bill C-68 on fishing rights, the rights of the Mi'kmaq in the Atlantic Canada are still not fully recognized to this day more than 20 years after the landmark decision of the Supreme Court. This is yet another sign that we, as a society, are far from equal justice for indigenous Canadians, and that the government has been failing on the implementing the conclusions of the Supreme Court judgment and to enforce these recognized constitutional rights. <laughs> In its report, the Black Caucus has made very important and significant recommendations that I'm going to point out to 12 of them, 15 of them. And they are easy. They've been identified in the past so often, but not yet implemented. First, eliminate mandatory minimum sentencing measures has been also uh, sponsored by Senator Pate for many years in the Senate, and the government has promised to act on this, and still to this day, we haven't seen a bill presented, introduced by the government. However, we heard recently that maybe it's coming, finally. Two, revisit restrictions on conditional sentencing. Three, establish community justice centers across the country as an alternative for imprisonment. Four, found community-based sentencing diversions programs. Five, invest in restorative justice programs and other community-grounded initiatives. Six, implement the recommendations from previous parliamentary committees regarding efforts to counter online hate, heighten public safety, and make sure that social media platforms are responsible for removing hateful and extremist content. Seven, address the lack of representation of black Canadian and indigenous people in the administration of justice, naming appointing judges, prosecutors, justice of the peace that are coming from these communities and are fully able to serve. Eight, provide supplemental legal aids for individuals from communities that are overrepresented in our prisons and often forgotten there for many years. Nine, fundamental reform of the police and public security service. Focus on effective policing with emphasis on de-escalation techniques, as has been advocated by Senator Murray St. Clair in the Globe and Mail a few days ago. Ten, reallocation of funds directed towards social service and mental health care experts, training nonviolent intervention and de-escalation that will work closely in collaboration with the police service to prevent the use of arms instead to reply to mental problems. This has happened in Montreal even a few years ago. 11, move immediately to ban carding and racial profiling by federal law enforcement. 12, address overrepresentation of black Canadians and indigenous people in the federal population implementing the recommendation from numerous existing studies on the issue. It's not new, it's not acted upon, that's the problem. 13, immediately release from correctional institutions individuals who do not pose a risk to society with adequate support in the community and in consultation with affected communities. 14, address the lack of representation of black Canadians and indigenous people in the administration of public security, like parole board, parole board members, senior prison officers, administration of the penitentiary system, post-release administration, and 15, require body cameras for all on-duty police officers, a proposal that the Prime Minister has finally endorsed. 
Colleagues, there are solutions that are there, available. The, only the, the will to implement them is missing. They cannot be further delayed. We don't need more task force. We don't need more commissions. We don't need more reports. We need actions. Hier, je lisais un article bien intéressant de... Yesterday, I read an article that Noemi Merci published in the Actuality magazine. In it, she stated that black women are constantly forgotten in boardrooms, in the workplace, and in debates on systemic discrimination. They are forgotten in the debate on racism. Ms. Mercier stated that black women are twice as likely to be stopped by police as white women. So these black women ultimately are more likely to find themselves facing the law. And this situation is one that is problematic in Montreal or in Quebec generally. But it also exists elsewhere. The article states that in Halifax, black women are 3.6 times more likely to be stopped by police officers. And in Ottawa, black women drivers between 16 and 24 uh, undergo traffic checks 80% more often than they should given their proportion in the population. Throughout the company, the, throughout the country rather, black women's income is only 56% of white men's incomes. All in all, we see here that women from visible minorities suffer a double, a double discrimination, sex-based and race-based. Racism and discrimination, special attention should be given to the effect of gender racism, especially of women m members of minority groups. En conclusion, le racisme est encore aujourd'hui une réalité. In conclusion, racism is still a reality for Indigenous and Black Canadians and Canadians of color in their interactions with the police and public institutions, as well as in their workplaces. We all, as citizens, as legislators, as members of civic society, we all have the moral obligation to take concrete measures to end this problem now. Thank you.